Hi everybody, Matt here, Simply Strength. Today I want to talk a little bit about something that I have recent experience with, which is rejection and failure, and most importantly, how to get over it. Uh, this video isn't scripted, it's just me reeling off some of my thoughts. Um, lots of ideas floating around in my head because, uh, you know, last week I had a few rejections myself and I just, I'm just i just waxing lyrical about it, to be honest. So hopefully some of my ideas will be useful for you moving forward. Basically, rejection, to my mind, is 95% of life. So we might as well get used to it. Um, and then you can apply this to numerous areas of life. So, for example, you, if I think back to the very early days, um, school grades, I mean, well, it's, that's more failure. But the, a barometer gets set with the school grades that you're supposed to achieve or, you know, you're either good or bad or your parents put a value on them in terms of how, how good they should be, where they're at all subjective and school I've, I've said before that I'll cover this in a different video because school is a whole debate in itself but you know there's an element of failure associated with that if you don't get the results that you want to get or should get or whatever else um, but my own initial experiences of rejection actually involve um, women as it happens uh, thinking back to my mid-teens, and I think I've mentioned this in my very first video, the MGTOW by default video. Um, just, yeah, um, basically girls just turning you down, and since then, before I became aware of my status as a MGTOW, I would approach women in clubs or wherever and, and try and make conversation and ask them out and this and that, and you would just get you know, a look of disdain, and it's like, my thoughts on that were, they're not, re they're, looking back now with hindsight, they weren't rejecting me, the person, Matt, they were rejecting the advance, basically. Um, at least that's how I reflect on that. But obviously now I'm, I'm follow I'm going my own way, then I'm not, I don't subscribe to any of that, and I'm I'm glad it turned out that way. So moving on from, from women, uh, in my mid to late teens, I was in a band and I was trying to make music and hopefully take that somewhere. That was sort of my dream. And it still is one of my career ambitions is to actually put something out, uh, either under my own finance or, or uh, you know, through obviously not a record deal. Um, I would take that if it was offered, but... It's more just a hobby, you know, releasing it through either YouTube or my own, setting up my own label or something like that. But I've set out a plan of how to achieve that and I'm going to put that into motion. But anyway, we did, uh, as a band, when I was about 17, recorded a demo, which looking back, it was it was bad, uh, the quality. I think there was some, some good ideas there. Um, I don't have it anymore, but what I did do was I sent it off to a lot of different labels large and small which was very naive um, it wasn't good enough to send off at the time and um, you hear I heard absolutely nothing back at all and you start to think oh you know at the time I was like really annoyed about it thinking you know it's not good enough I've practiced hours and hours and hours and I wrote all these songs and I did all this and that and um, yeah it's just you have to get over that get over that rejection and keep keep forging on um, and you move move things forward to sort of the present day and you know university applications things like that they they got turned down several of those did uh, your driving test I mean this is more I, would, I can see that this is more failure um, type type instances there's things like your driving test you know I failed the first time failed the second time and passed the third time and you know fingers crossed I've not I've not had any you know accidents or made any claims whilst being a driver for the last sort of nine years 
Um, but initially, you're very annoyed. You're very angry that you you failed either with yourself or with the examiner, um, because actually my examiner was was an asshole. Um, but you do just have to forge ahead, and even though it was, you you have to pay for the exam and everything else, which was frustrating because it wasn't cheap. You just have to keep hammering away all the time. There's a great song by uh, Racer X, uh, an American, uh, not very well-known band, but they're uh, famous for their uh, guitar-playing abilities. Uh, they've got a song called Hammer Away, which is uh, one of my favourites. And it's just a, a, a motto for how to live your life, really, whether you get rejected in your career or, you know, even on things like YouTube. I mean, I'm fortunate at the moment in that most people that are tuning into my channel seem to enjoy the content, give me a lot of great feedback. They enjoy the ideas that I'm putting out, which is which is really good. But there will be a time if I keep moving forward where, you know, you do get trolls, you do get haters, um, bad comments, and personally, you know, you just have to move forward. Uh, and again thinking more more recently with regards to uh, you know this past year or so the last past couple of years I've uh, finished my master's degree and since then I've worked in academia both as a as a teacher and uh, as a researcher and these are two two jobs where you know I don't really know how much money I'm going to earn each month I mean, they're great for my career and, and all that, but you never really know you need something more concrete. So I've been applying for other jobs just as sort of part-time work. You know, any anything really that I can put my skills into just to tide me over just so I can get my, get my uh, life in order. And it is frustrating when you send a CV out that you believe to be very good with a lot of different experience, I've got you know, ex experience in the private sector uh, and in the public sector and education, you think that it's a very good CV and and it doesn't get any any feedback whatsoever. There's no, you know, I must have sent it out to about twenty different uh, different job advertisements and absolutely nothing. And you think, well, either there's that many applicants or I'm overqualified and. I'm leaning towards the latter, but you never can tell um, uh, these days with, with the economy the way it is. And focusing on my, my academic work, rejection is, you know, commonplace there as well. Uh, you know, so with the research papers that I've submitted, um, probably about 80% of those get rejected and you have to resubmit them. And it's literally called rejection. So you sign in and it tells you rejected. Um, with revisions or sometimes just outright. And like I said, you know, rejection is probably 95% of your life. I mean, I can think on, uh, I can think of perhaps 5% of the time you get the, the positive results, the, the, um, the instances where you get what you're after. They probably come around 5% of the time. And, and uh, this is just the way life is. I mean, I've had interviews. My goal is to pursue a PhD um, in my area of in my in my discipline, and it's not sort it's not really my discipline. It's sort of bridging the gap between that and another one. And I've applied for projects at a number of leading institutions in the UK. In fact, one project I began emailing the supervisor, built up a rapport with him. I, he gave up a lot of his time over the phone to talk to me. And I thought I was in with a very good shout. I put in nine months of work uh, in combination with my other jobs to put in this application. Went and did the interview, thought it all went very well. And in the end, there was a better candidate and I was sort of second place. And, and I was very disappointed about that. And that was about a month ago. But uh, I picked myself up and had another interview for a separate one last week. Again, I thought that went very well, but I, I didn't feel right about the about the institution. But that was beside the point. It's it's what I needed to do. The it would have been a very good PhD. 
and found out last week that I didn't get that either. Um, and I actually met the other four candidates on the day. And I knew, and, and this is not being arrogant, uh, I knew that I, on paper I was the best candidate just from talking to them. So it's, it is bitterly disappointing and you do feel like they're rejecting you, the person, when perhaps you shouldn't. And, you know, people can't be down in the dumps about it for too long because the world the world is a harsh place, you know. It's there to test you and, you, like I said, you have to keep hammering away, keep banging on the door. And I've already lined up however many more projects that I'm going to apply for, for to get the funding to do the to study the areas that I want to do. And over the last two years, as well as my two jobs that I'm doing at the moment, I've done that much work for free. I've done internships. I've written up research for free um, just to get the publications on my CV. You have to do so many things now in this current economic climate, you know, free of charge, just to differentiate yourself from everybody else. You have to just keep grafting and grafting and grafting. And it's the same, I mean, although with, with this YouTube channel, um, I'm doing it, it is as a hobby, it is a lot of work, but I find it very rewarding, you know, especially when people seem to enjoy the content that I'm creating and hopefully it provides some value to, to people's lives. And there's, you know, and that is worth more than money, I think. So I hope you found those thoughts useful. Um, the underlying message of this conversation is really just to, you know, if, if there's any amount of, and there will be rejection in your life, um, and you fail at things that you that you want, you have to just keep forging ahead. So, uh, you know, make a plan. Like I've identified several areas where I could maybe improve things. You need to get your mentors. So I told you about the mentors that I have in my in my life. Uh, in my video the other week, the importance of mentorship. I'm going to sit down with a couple of mentors that I've got at my institution who I value. Uh, whose opinions I value very highly, get their advice on what needs um, improving in my CV and also my interview technique, and just keep going, keep moving forward. So that's that's my thoughts on the issue. Um, there's a lot of ideas floating around in my head, um, a lot of anger at first and resentment, but that soon went away when I realised that, you know, it's their loss, their loss, I'll go to another institution work my ass off, uh, be a really valuable, uh, be a valuable part of their faculty, produce good quality work, uh, be a good PhD student, and those other institutions will have missed out. So um, I hope you can all apply that logic and that worldview, that paradigm to your own life and, you know, just basically stick two fingers up at the... At the uh, phenomenon of rejection and failure because it's a fact of life 95% of your life uh, will be uh, rejection and failure so value the 5% revel in the 5% celebrate the 5% when you do get it when you do get what you want and just keep working you've got to keep keep working and the best bit is that 95% is that of people won't work right up to the, the bitter end so that's my message and I'd really appreciate your own stories, your comments, thoughts down below in the uh, in the comments box, in the comments area. Um, and if you did enjoy this video, please check out my Patreon page, um, which I'm going to be updating fairly soon. Um, I'd love to get some questions from you guys about uh, a different any uh, different topics that you you might feel are relevant to Simply Strength, um, and we can take things take things forward so again thank you to everyone that's been watching my videos uh, it's great to see um, it's really encouraging and um, yeah I'll see you again next time thanks for listening